Here we're looking at lesson number 18, and I'm looking at the book Intro to App Development with Swift. You can read through this chapter on your own, but for this video we're going to create a few different apps, and we're going to talk about adaptive user interface. Now, if you look at the source code, if you go to the folder and you go to number 18, you'll notice that it's actually just a list of files. These are different assets that we're going to use within the apps that we create within this video. So we're actually going to create our own Xcode projects to get started. Let's go ahead and select Open Xcode. Here you can create a new Xcode project or if you don't see this particular window you can say File, New, and click Project. From here, we're going to choose iOS. We want a single view application and click Next. Let's just call this Simple Center. Press Next and we'll save it wherever. I want to save mine to the desktop. Go ahead and click Create. Okay, if you double click in the top bar here, it's going to fill the screen. It makes it easier to see everything. All right, let's go to the main.storyboard. Click that once. Notice down here at the bottom it says view as. When it says view as iPhone 7, right now this view controller is laid up, laid out in the size relative to an iPhone 7. So this is kind of a visual representation of an iPhone 7. Well, if I click here, now I have a lot of other options. I can simulate a 7 Plus, even get into the old iPad Pro 9.7, 10.5, and even the giant 12.9. Well, the trouble is, of course, I can't see everything. You can change the zooming here. You can zoom out if you want. So this kind of replicates uh, the approximates the size of a device, which is really helpful when you're laying out different visual elements. Uh, let's go on down. Let's go and take a look at the iPhone 4S. Now, over in the object library, if you scroll down, you're going to see one called Label. Go ahead and click and drag a label. Notice again, we have these guides that show up when, when we're centering. So now this is centered vertically and horizontally. So go ahead and let go. Let's change this label. Let's say hello. Press return. And notice we have this centered on the screen. Well, let's change the device size. Let's see what happens. Let's try the SE. Uh, it's not quite right. Well, it's getting a little worse here. If I try the larger, uh, no, nope, that's even, that's not any better. Wait, wait a minute. What's going on? Let's go back to the iPhone 4S. And let's try landscape. What happens there? Oh, that's not even close. So what's going on? Well, by default, when you add a visual element to a view controller on in a storyboard, it's going to keep that at the exact pixel location, meaning X and Y coordinates that describe where this sits on the screen. It's exact. So when you rotate that, it's maintaining as if it were the same number of pixels from the top or from the left. And so what's happening is it's not adapting. This is not what you want. Well, Xcode has a tool that's called Auto Layout. Auto Layout uses what we call constraints or rules that say, hey, when I'm in a certain size screen, I want you to always be centered or always be in this location relative to something else and it will adapt based on the size. All right, let's see that in action. Come over here to the bottom right and you'll see a few more buttons. And if you look at this button here, it says align. Go ahead and click that. And here it says add new alignment constraints. Well, right now I can add one that says horizontally in container or vertically in container. I want both, so go ahead and check those. And then click add to constraints. All right, notice now it's added these blue lines. These indicate that these are constraints. You'll also look over here in this view hierarchy and you'll see another thing that says constraints. You can twirl it open 
and it's saying, hey, we're going to keep this centered, both X and Y. So let's see how that goes. Let's see what happens. Let's try it out. Let's go landscape. Hey, look at that. That's a lot better. Let's go back to portrait. Let's try some larger phones. Hey, that's even, look at this. Wait, I see a trend happening. Awesome, check it out. Because of the auto layout constraints, it is keeping this exactly where we want it, regardless of the size of device. This is just the beginning of the power of what comes with auto layout. Now, let's go ahead and move this. Let's say I move this down and over a little bit. Notice what happens. Immediately this turns orange. It's saying, hey, uh, your constraints are off from what you're doing here. Notice this little outline here. This is saying, hey, this is where your constraints are saying it is, but right now you've moved it and it's off. That means when you go to display this, on, run it on a device, it's going to show off center. It's not going to show what you think it is. It's going to show centered because the constraints are saying always center, but visually I've moved it. Well, you've got the same warning here. It says, hey, this will be different at runtime. And then even over here, it gives you a little more detail. You click this and it says, hey, this guy is expected, but it's actually there. It's trying to warn you. Now, how do we fix that? I'm going to go ahead and select that label again. Come over here to the bottom right and it says on this bottom one, Resolve Auto Layout Issues. If I click that, I want to see a few options. Now, I want to show you something. If you read the book, let's go back to the book for a second. And if you've read the book, you're going to say, Brent, um, that's not what the book said. And I'm going to say, well, that's not what Xcode said. Check this out. Notice they reference this same view. They're saying, hey, you can update frames, update constants, or sorry, constraints. If you go back one page, what they're saying is to fix this, you have two options. One, you update the frame to match the constraints, or two, you update the constraints to match the frame. Well, the problem is if you look at the book, it's saying, hey, update frames is in this button. Well, if I go back to Xcode and I click that button, it ain't there. Well, something's changed. And what's changed is, notice over here, you got this new button that says Update Frames. So what they've done is they pulled that out because you, you may use Update Frames a lot more. What this means, when you say Update Frame, that means right now, this label has a frame that says, I want to be this location, this size, and it's off from what the expected location is. If you say update frame, it's going to move it back. So let's click update frame. Now it moves it back. So you can see the advantage of if you're moving things around and you realize, wait a minute, my constraints, I, I actually I moved it and I, I don't want it there. I want to go back to what my constraints were. You can say update frames. The other option is if I move this, whoops, make sure we select the label. If I move this and actually I say, I really want it in this location, then we can update the constraints. Updating the constraints means, well, instead of being centered, I want to be offset by a certain value. And to do that, you come over here to the Resolve Auto Layout and you say Update Constraint Constants. Now it's blue, it's happy, and it will always be in this location based on the constraints. All right, thank you for watching. Be sure to check out the next video to see the next app in this chapter.